All right, coming up, Minnesota Vikings offensive tackle Bryant McKinney. He's got a new quarterback starting the season. Got a new running back he can block for. Vikings looking good last night in preseason football. We'll talk about it all with Bryant coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, his two years at Miami, he didn't give up a single sack. Wow. Even more impressive than that, he roomed with Jeremy Shockey. We'll talk to him about both. Our next guest on the Pulse is in his sixth season in the NFL, his fifth of a starting offensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. We welcome into the show Bryant McKinney. Bryant, it is good to have you with us. Thank you for the time. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, so we just saw the highlight last night. Defense looked good. Your offensive unit barely saw the field in the first quarter. Adrian Peterson looked good. What's the biggest thing that you take out of that preseason game? Um, that the run game pretty much opened up last night, and I think that's good. That's, I think that's very good for us. We saw that first run from Adrian Peterson. What did you think as you saw it? You may have been laying on the ground somewhere, but what did you think as you saw it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was blocking when I stopped to watch after he got past me, and uh, he's pretty explosive, so I guess he's going to be a game breaker for us this year. Yeah, what's your initial impression for him on the field and off the field? Um, oh, he's real cool off the field, and on the field he's – He's pretty fast to the edge. Him and Chester have two different styles, but I like both of them as backs. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you suppose the Adrian Peterson-Chester-Taylor running back combination is going to work over the course of the season? I think that would be a, one, a good one-two punch because uh, they have two different styles. Chester's more of a – he lets us set up our blocks a little more, and Adrian, you just know, you get on your block and make a little crease, and he's going to get through there. So they have two different styles, but – I think it'll work out pretty good. How welcoming has Chester been? Obviously, a guy comes in, he may get some of your mm -hmm. carries, will get some of your carries. What have you seen uh, in practice and training camp and such? Um, I think Chester, Chester has, has, has really accepted him. He, um, he knows it'll take off a little low from him, so I think his body will be able to carry a little longer during the season. All right, Brian, we've got an email question. We're going to sprinkle in a couple of these over the course of the interview, and it has to do with your quarterback. It's from Dave in Dallas. Tavares Jackson looks like he'll be the starter this year. How confident is the team that he can lead you guys into the playoffs? I think the team is pretty confident. I mean, we have a great defense, and the offensive line is pretty much the veteran, so I feel like as long as we open up holes and give him time to make good decisions, we should be able to get in the playoffs. Yeah, he's done some good things, but he is a young guy entering his yeah. second season in the NFL. When you get into that huddle, Bryant, you're going to have a young guy like Adrian in that mm -hmm. huddle and young wide receivers in that huddle. Yeah. Who is the leader of the huddle? Who's the vocal leader in the huddle? Honestly, right now, um, Hutchinson actually is more the vocal person out of the whole group. He um, tries to motiv motivate everybody. Um, Tavares, I think, is still young, trying to get a feel for everything. and. I'm not quite sure if he knows yet that he's really the leader, but <laughs> <laughs> he's, going, he's coming along. How much of a role do you take in that huddle? I'm more of a lead by example, but mm -hmm. um, when, it, when I need to say something, that's when I say something. I think that's when a lot of people listen to me because I don't talk that often. Ah, all right. So, uh, absolutely. You're talking something must be important, right? Jeff exactly. in Minnesota got another email. Everyone keeps talking about how the Bears will easily win the North. What do the guys on your team think about that, and is there extra motivation to try to prove people wrong? I think so, especially because um, last season how um, we were at home, we played the Bears, how we lost the game because of a, a missed block and a fumble, and it, it caused them to score a touchdown. That's how they beat us in the end of the fourth quarter. So I definitely think we definitely have a chance to uh, beat them uh, this season. As I'm sure Brad Childress has said a million times, you're going to have to do one thing in particular better than you did last year, and that is play disciplined football. Cut down exactly. on the penalties, led the league with 123 of them last year. How do you improve? this year in that role? Um, actually, like when people jump off sides, we, we make them run to the furthest goal post, things like that. <laughs> Try to discipline them some kind of way so you don't want to jump off sides. Because uh, the penalties is really what kills us the most. And when we get in the red zone, there'll be a lot of penalties that used to set us back. So if we eliminate those, we'll put ourselves in a better uh, position. Yeah, I read about that. 21 false starts last year. So now it's the, what do you call it, the jog of shame? How, how, how exactly does that work? <laughs> It's just they already know once they jump offside, just get the running. <laughs> now, I noticed, we'll you, put in. I noticed you said they, like I ain't ever had to do it. Is that, is that right? Uh, look, let me knock on wood. Nope. I have, You've never I had haven't. to do the jog of shame, huh? No. I watch the ball, if anything. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, you, of course, spent two seasons at the University of Miami. And in your two seasons as a hurricane, you never allowed a single quarterback sack. How did you do that playing major college football? I think we had a great supporting cast with receivers like uh, Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne, and Andre Johnson, where they were able to get open over the other DBs. And um, our offensive coach, offensive line coach, Arkeo, he was so good. He just taught us a lot of stuff while we were there. So that was that was the way. Any kind of punishment there for jumping offsides? 
No, I've really never had a problem with jumping off sides. So. <laughs> if you need to talk to a lot of linemen, because a lot of people just can't get it right, uh, maybe more impressive than your no sacks allowed in two years in Miami, the fact that you roomed with Jeremy Shockey and everything seemed to be okay, that's good. What's your best story about rooming with Jeremy Shockey? Jeremy Shockey, we had a barbecue um, at the house one time, and um, the whole team came over and everything, and every was, a, was the, the guy who was pretty much doing the barbecuing. Shockey took it upon himself to put his whole steak on the, on the grill, and it took up the whole grill. So him and Reed getting an argument about, <laughs> about the steak, and Shockey's like, well, this is my house, but Reed's like, we, I'm trying to cook for everybody else. They're getting a big argument about that, but it was funny, though. Ed Reed? Ed Reed and Jeremy Shockey? <laughs> yeah. So who won the <laughs> argument? What happened? Did he move the steak? Or did he, he had to move the, the steak because there was a lot of other people there, too, that was for the barbecue. So. <laughs> ah, good stuff, man. Well, hey, it's going to be fun to watch you guys and watch this offense and watch Adrian, and, and uh, yeah, it, we'll see what happens in the NFC North. We're looking forward to it. Bryant McKinney, it's great well, talking with you. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me.